Hey guys, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you guys can hear me okay and see me okay. Welcome to my attic. It's a bit of a mess in here, but we are making things this afternoon, working on a lot of things that are with this particular machine here. This is a Singer SK360 knitting machine. I'm gonna be working on this this afternoon. I've spent the last hour working on it. <laughs> with the uh with the members in the school of sweet georgia and we've been spending like a concentrated amount of time working on it i'm going to show you a little bit about what's been happening behind the scenes as i go but um yeah so you guys will know i was making this sweater this is the studley jumper this is designed by nick corgan from the machine knit community and I have been working on this for a while now, but it's basically done. Like all those things are done, the body is done. The only thing that needs to happen is I need to seam the sides. And so I have been doing that by hanging the edges on the machine and then zipping across and doing them together. So that has been great, uh, except that this is dark gray <laughs> and I can't see that well. So I can't really see the stitches well enough to seam them together. So that's been the delay in getting this done. So while I've been waiting to get this done, I started a whole new sweater, of course. So this is the same jumper, the Studley jumper, but I am, instead of the yarn that was specified uh, in the original pattern, I'm using our Sweet Georgia um, BFL and Silk Fine yarn. So that is, let's see, I have a pain of it here. This is this yarn here. This is the Sweet Georgia BFL and Silk Fine. This colorway actually I'm holding Stormy Night um, which is from our Elixir collection but the ones that I have here in the actual um, sweater here this is Tempest which is a color that's coming out later on this fall or soon and then the orangey sort of color here the rusty color that's called Bright Penny and um, this yellow color is called Honey Gold. And that is definitely one of the elixir colors. And then I added a little bit of a neutral in here, which is the birch. And that is this. This is kind of like the lightest color that we dye. And this neutral, it just goes with everything. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, this is the sweater so far. Now, during last, no, maybe one of the live streams that I did on Twitch, I did start the sleeve. I hung the sleeve and I started knitting the sleeve and then I got to the end and just switching it to ribbing. It was my mistake the first time. I forgot to reattach my yarn after I had sort of set up all of my needles and all of my stitches on the needle bed here. And then when I zipped across, the whole sweater fell on the floor and I lost everything. So then last hour with the SOS on our sort of virtual co-working session, I rehung the sleeve and I finished I, I was working on finishing it until I got to the end and working on the ribbing portion again there's a problem where one of the needles uh actually two of the needles were messed up so one of the needles was bent and I'll post a photo of this later on Instagram but basically all the needles are supposed to be straight up and down and this one was kind of bent this way and so that was causing problems with knitting and then one of the other needles had another problem where the hook of the needle was um I guess damage so rather than being a hook where it could actually make stitches it was kind of sticking out a little bit and not making any stitches and so all of the stitches were bunching up on that not being knit so i basically have to take the sleeve off again and it's a bit of a mess right now <laughs> so sleeve number one is a mess i also took that hour to replace a whole bunch of the river needles so hopefully hopefully everything will go well from this point on but i think that rather than working on this finishing this first sleeve for now, I'm gonna work on the second sleeve and just get that started today. And so this is the one that I'm gonna be working on. We're just gonna hang it here on the machine. Um, yeah, fantastic. So I'm just gonna check the chat as I go, hopefully. <laughs> it's nice to see everybody here, wonderful. And um, yeah, it's nice to see you guys. Okay, fantastic, so let's get started. So I am hoping that if all of the problems are with the river, then at least this part of the process will be totally fine. That is the hope, of course.
let me know if like everything is in focus. If you think, uh, if you want to see a different angle, if you want to see anything in particular about what I'm doing, you can just let me know for sure. But right now I'm just picking up stitches off of the waste yarn in order to hang them. I know that I need to have 40 stitches on either side. And so that is to about here. So I'm just sort of pulling out the needle so I know how much to do. Let's see here. This is 40. So just pulling those out to get those ready. I find one of my challenges right now is trying to figure out, well, how do I know if the needles are damaged? And if they are damaged, can I remove them? in the middle of the process and just replace those needles? Or do I have to wait until I take all of the knitting off, remove the sponge bar, and then switch the needles? That's what I did with the river. I had to remove all of the knitting before I could switch the needles out. I wish there was a faster way of doing that. The saying that uh, with machine knitting, there is the promise of knitting faster and knitting more garments in less time. However, I don't have very many garments to show yet. <laughs> and I think a lot of that is because there's a long process. It's a bit of a long journey to develop the skills in order to be able to do all of the things. Let's get this in focus. Yeah, I think that these knitting machines, um, a lot of them are only available used now. So this one I received from one of the members of our community, local community here in Vancouver. I was really, really lucky to be able to get this from her. This one was really, really well taken care of. Um, so any bent needles or damaged needles are probably because I've done something. <laughs> I've done something wrong to the machine. Um, but I did receive another machine from someone who's, I think their machine had been in storage for years, years and years. And um, it's really possible that um, the oil that was used, maybe like the, the machine oil, kind of got gummed up, kind of got, I don't know, just dried up. And it dried the, the carriage, this actual carriage, it dried it to the machine so the the machine has the carriage on it and it's stuck and i can't move it and uh i've been told that if i use a hair dryer a blow dryer that i can heat it up and hopefully melt some of the grease to let this whole thing start moving again but let's see we will see Okay, so I don't want to miss any stitches. If I miss any stitches here, then I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to have a giant hole in the top of my sleeve. So. Sometimes you want to have three hands.
I was finding that with the SOS virtual co-working that we just did, that hour that we just did, I found it great in the sense that when I was having the problem with the sleeves and I kept procrastinating about it, I didn't want to hang it back on the machine. I was just procrastinating about fixing it, but spending that one hour of dedicated time um, and then finally hanging that sleeve back on the machine, I was like, oh, it didn't take that much time at all. It took maybe only 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes to do it. And I had been procrastinating about it. And it was stalling me from being able to move forward on this project. And uh, so just having set that appointment and making the commitment and saying, hey, I'm going to do it during this time made me actually move forward and get it done. But then my machine malfunctioned. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I think Louise, you're saying that you just got a knitting machine. Is that, I think you were given a knitting machine. I'm curious what kind of machine it is and uh, what you think you might want to make on it. I have so many things that I wanna make. It's a matter of lining them all up so that I have time to actually do them. In my mind, I think the projects are always, uh, I don't know, smaller than I think. I think I can do them really quickly. And then I get started and I realize, oh, it's actually kind of a big job. Okay, so that is all the stitches. Oh. Like that is missing. Okay, so this cast on comb did not come with the, with this machine. This one is from a brother machine.
Okay. Okay. So just resetting my counter to zero and it's time to start knitting the actual sleeve. Knit 24 rows. Increase. It's always really nerve-wracking when just starting yarn, joining yarn, making sure that everything is set and in the right place. I don't know how many times I have started, I think, you know, everything is all ready to go and then I start knitting and then everything falls apart. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Camera come back to life. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, this camera is going to be tricky <laughs> to do this uh, to do this live stream with. It has a tendency to overheat and then shut down, which is not great. So we might have to fiddle with cameras in the future. I don't know. Basically, I'm just working some increases. So every other row has to have an increase. 
and these are called fully fashioned increases. I feel like increases are always a little bit harder to do than decreases. It's a little bit finicky and uh, feels always like surgery. So the reason why I'm sort of prioritizing making this particular sweater right now is because it's supposed to be the sample. Well, it's supposed to be one of the samples for our trade show in two weeks. <laughs> and uh, we had made sort of this mood board of all of the different garment samples that we wanted to make. And then I think I kind of promised to make some of them, but... I always think that I can do more than I can actually do. So that is always a bit of a challenge. And then you drop a stitch. Okay, so there's one stitch and that's two stitches. This is really like, feels always like some form of knitting surgery going on here. Thank you, Louise. 
I'm interested to hear about your experience when you finally get your machine opened and set up and how it all works out for you. And yeah, Rachel, you're talking about becoming a tinkerer. I, uh, I've become obsessed with the idea of learning how to do 3D printing <laughs> because it gives you the ability to like print your own fiber arts tools and bobbins and all sorts of things like that. And I've been thinking about 3D printing bobbins for the Dreaming Robots e -nano, uh, EEW and the Nano e-spinner. Because I have those e-spinners and I have all the original stuff, but it would be kind of fun to, you know, create your own bobbins to go with it. Um, nice and pretty colored bobbins. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about recently. And maybe working uh, with my kids and learning how to 3D print alongside them. Everybody says, I don't need another hobby. I'm at 14, so I've done seven increases. I need to do 12. So I've got five more to do. You know, all of these movements feel super awkward. They still continue to feel awkward, even though I've been doing this for how long? I started last year, 18 months. Still feels kind of weird. <laughs> still feels like I need so much practice. How do you stick with something when it's hard, when it doesn't feel comfortable, when you feel awkward? And We all want to do things that we're good at. So it can be hard to learn something new when you don't like feeling uncomfortable. More bobbins, though, means more temptation to constantly start new spinning projects. <laughs> I hear you completely. Yeah, I, I stumbled on this whole set of printing instructions for all different kinds of EEW bobbins. And then I saw um, some bobbins that <laughs> I showed Greta. They're like two-tone two because you're using um, filament that is colored with two or three different colors at the same time and so when you look at the things that are printed they're they're absolutely gorgeous um i kind of like i kind of want that i want to try that um speaking of things that we're spinning and need to be finished i did recently spin a whole braid's worth of this new fiber, this new fiber color you can see here. This way, this way, this way. Yeah, so this color is called Trail Runner. This is one of the colors that we're gonna come out with actually soon, next week. <laughs> Teresa's gonna put them up on the website next week, but this is called Trail Runner. And I spun the whole braid of it, I broke it into three different chunks and then spun each chunk to make a three ply fractal. And so all I need to do with this bobbin is basically wind the singles off onto storage bobbins and then I'm going to ply from them. But this has been sitting for a couple of days because I just didn't want to bring it upstairs and do the rewinding of the storage bobbins. It's such a simple thing and I could just do it, do it quicker. Um, but in the meantime, because I didn't want to come up here to do that, I started another spinning project, which is this one. This is a, a new color as well. Wait, this is right here. 
the new color as well. This is called Salted Caramel. So again, this one is coming out next Friday as well. Let's see, where's the, yeah, there's the focus. And um, yeah, so this color also, I'm spinning this right now, BFL and Silk, I'm spinning, spinning that downstairs. That is also gonna be a th three ply fractal yarn. it one side and not the other. Yeah, so Sheena, you're saying that your husband used his 3D printer to make a tensioned lazy Kate with integrated plying through the ring setup. Whoa, that's really cool. Plying through the rings is is great. I, I started using it after I learned it from, well, I heard about it from Rachel, who got it from Kim McKenna, and then also uh, Katrina at Crafty Jacks, and um, have a little bit of a setup to do that at home now, too. Yeah, so <laughs> I had a whole email exchange with someone who was interested in the CSMs and wanted wanted a circular sock knitting machine, but um, wanted to print their own. So they were talking to me about printing their own, like 3D printing their own with plans that you can get freely on the internet right now. So that's a thing. Like if you wanted to print new cylinders or different parts, various tools for your CSM, there's lots of things available, um, like starting points, designs and starting points that you can find on, on the internet. I really hope that this sweater fits. So close. Speaking of fiber, um, I don't know if you guys know, we already opened a thread or a conversation or a channel in our Discord server uh, for Tour de Fleece, which is going to happen in July. And so we've never done an official Tour de Fleece team before. 
Um, but we always kind of participate unofficially from the sidelines um, because I feel like it's a really good encourage. It's an encouraging event to, um, yeah, to get you spinning a little bit every day. Just getting you to spin even 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, uh, doing that during the month of July is nice. It's good to develop a habit that way. And uh, so we have already a thread started on Discord and people are talking about what they want to spin, what they're going to make, um, what fiber they're going to use. I, I have lots of things I need to spin. Okay, so I think, I think I should have 104 stitches now. No, I need two more. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. Vicky just popped the link for the Discord in the chat. So that's super helpful. Thank you. Okay, now I have to cast on six stitches. This part was always scary.
Okay. That's always the scariest part. <laughs> no. Okay, now we're gonna decrease. Okay, so guys, if you're curious about the yarn that I am using, it's the BFL and Silk Fine. Um, and you can find that on that link there with the little QR code. I'm trying to use that for a lot of sweaters now. I think it just makes really nice sweaters. So you can let me know in the chat if there's something that you want to learn, something that you want to see uh, see us make on this channel.
I don't know if you guys can see here. <laughs> oh dear. can see right there. We have a jam. Okay. <laughs> so this jammed because the yarn got wrapped around the little brush here of the roller. Ah! ah! Okay. <laughs> okay. It's going to be okay. Just have to untangle it. So that's that. And now we just have to reset all of these stitches.
Okay, that was one. Okay, we are right now at 84 rows, maybe 20 some more rows. Or 20 more rows, okay. <laughs> Hi there, yeah. So I am making a colorwork sweater on the knitting machine. This is a, it's called the Studley, the Studley jumper, and it's designed by Nick Corgan. And I'm using the Singer 360, yeah, Singer SK360. And we're just knitting a sleeve right now. It's almost, almost done. Let's see. And then six rows. Okay. Okay. 
Oh yes, last time I was working on the yoke and seaming uh, the two shoulders together, right? And uh, yeah, making the front and back go together. This time I'm working on one of the sleeves. The other sleeve is like 97% done. So I'm just working on the last sleeve decreases. And now six rows. If you guys can see my yarn is totally getting tangled up in here and I think I'm thinking I might be able to make it to the end of this ball then I'll have to go wind another skein of yarn and then we might pause there for today because we knit an entire ball of yarn in about an hour <laughs> until we drop a stitch and then we have to take a pause. Yeah, it is coming together. I mean, it seems slow in some ways, fast in other ways. Like I would never have imagined that you could knit an entire sleeve in like an hour and a bit. It's kind of crazy. People talk about, you know, hand knitting and being on sleeve island for weeks. One hundred and forty four rows. Give a couple more to go. Maybe two more. <gasps> Did I screw up? Thank you. 
That is best. Okay, last one. Okay, so now the main part of the sleeve is done and theoretically we should be able to connect the river but I was having trouble with the river and all the needles and so I'm going to pause it right here. I'm just going to cut off my yarn and then I'm going to attach waste yarn because I want to be sure that the river needles are okay before I <laughs> do anything. So I'm going to pause my piece here. Normally I would just let this hang, but I do want to show you how much is done. Okay, so we're just popping some waste yarn on. So so that I can just kind of disconnect it and you can see all the weights off. This is the second sleeve. This is how much we knit in this basically one hour. The whole sleeve is done. Hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> so see this is sleeve number one with the problem ribbing this is sleeve number two ta-da with I just put it on waste yarn and then when I finally get the river working and fixed again I can just quickly hang this back onto the machine and go from there like the last hour when I figured out that hanging this only took about 10 minutes so that is pretty quick so that's sleeve that's the other sleeve I can kind of like leave the ribbing even and just move forward and start hanging the front of, well, actually it goes this way. I'm gonna hang it this way and then hang it where the, uh, the, uh, the inside of the sweater is facing me. Hang this on the, on the machine and then start to knit the front and back of this sweater. Yay! So hopefully this will be ready soon and then I can actually show you the full and completed sweater, actually have something to wear. I think it'll be really nice. There's no front and back yet, so basically like that, except on my earrings. So I have to disconnect myself now. Okay. So eventually it will be done. I think it'll look good. <laughs> Yeah, I think it looks good too. Um, don't look at the waist yarn because the waist yarn is very fluorescent. But yeah, I think it'll look good once it's all finished. And I hope it'll fit. Um, yeah. The combination of colors. It took so long to figure out this combination of colors. There's 
a lot of different choices. I mean, I have a lot of stuff on my table here. I have colors here from these are elixir colors. So this is this is the twilight color. It's kind of like a purplish, dusky purple. This one is sangria. Also, I have a whole stash of this to make a different sweater. And then beach house, which is one of my favorite colors always. And so there's that and this. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many things to try, so many different color combinations to try. And um, so I just feel like if I could knit faster, it would be great because then I could try so many different iterations of this. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for keeping me company. Thanks for keeping me company while I work on this sweater. Um, yeah, I just have the front and back to do and then we should be done. Fantastic. I think we're going to do this again next Friday. We'll give this another try. Let me know what you thought about um, everything about the setup, <laughs> about the camera freezing and dying. Um, yeah, I need to make jumpers for the whole family in all different colors. That would be fantastic if I could. I did make sweaters for the kids when they were younger and then they've outgrown them and so they do need new sweaters. So thanks for keeping me company during this time and it was nice to see everybody. I hope that you guys will come back for the next one and hang out in the chat with me and let me know how it was and uh, I hope to see you guys again next time. All right, bye for now. <laughs>